Hi, I'm Victor from Divimundo.com. You might have noticed that the form entries from the Div4 module aren't saved in the database. So this means that you can't export them into a CSV file, and if your emails are lost, you can't recover the form entries. So the solution to this problem is called DiviformDB. So this is a lightweight plugin that lets you save and export your form entries in Divi. So I'm going to guide you through this plugin and how to get it. You'll find all the links and resources needed in this blog post on divimundo.com. And if you're watching this directly on YouTube, you'll find the link to the blog post in the description below the video. Let's have an overview before we dive into the details. So the plugin lets you automatically save all Divi contact form submissions into the WordPress database. You can browse, search and filter the submissions from your WordPress dashboard. You can export the submissions into CSV files. And as a bonus feature, you can also publish the form submission content into any post type or page with just a few clicks. Pricing and license. This plugin is 35 US dollars per year until it's cancelled. And then you have unlimited usage, so you can have it on as many websites as you want. Support and automatic updates are included. The plugin is developed by WebAce Techs and can be purchased at Elegant Marketplace. And if you use my affiliate link, which is divimundo.com slash db, I will get a small commission, but it will never cost more for you. So thank you for supporting me and making it possible for me to make more videos like this. Installing the plugin. Let's head over to Elegant Marketplace. And if you scroll down, you can read a little bit about the plugin and the features, but that's what we are going to do in this video, right? Just click purchase on this button and we can head over to the checkout. You can use PayPal or credit card. And when you fill in your information, I'll see you on the other side. We're back and I got a zip file containing the plugin DVFormDB and a license key. And I actually bought this one back in 2017, so I've been a user for a long time. I'll head to my development site and I'll go to plugins. I'll click add new, upload plugin, then I'll drag and drop the file and install. And I'll activate the plugin. And as you can see, it's version 1.9.1 that I'm using in this video. And as you can see, we have a new menu item, DVDB, in the WordPress left-hand menu. Let's walk through the different options and we'll start by the last one, which is licensing. Here we can add our license key, so I will paste it and save. So this way we can update the plugin. All DVDB tab, it will of course be empty since we haven't had any form submissions since the plugin was uh, installed. I will actually go to the website. I have uh, one regular form page and I also have a page with multiple forms. One, two and three. And I will fast forward while I submit these forms a couple of times each so you can have a look at the result. Okay, I'm done. Let's head back to the WordPress dashboard. And I'll refresh the All DVDB tab. And now we can see all the submissions. We can see the sender. We can see if it's read or unread. We can see if it's cloned. And that means if it's published as a post or page. We'll come to that later. We can also see which page it was published on. And this is a really nice feature. Because when you get an email from a DV form, you will just see the name of the website. But you can't see which page it was submitted on. I can also see the submission date. With uh, actually down to the exact second the, the form was sent. I can search through the different submissions. I can filter from different dates. Now we only have October 2021. We can also use the bulk actions to move to trash. If I click view submission, 
I can get some more details about specific submission. I can see that it was first read by admin, that's me, it was submitted at this time, this date. And now I can see all the fields from the form, like first name, last name, email address, the category, the message. Okay, this is the final message, let's go. And the, the time of the submission again. And then we have some extra information. We can see the page it was submitted on. We can actually view the page and directly edit the page as a shortcut. If the user was logged into WordPress, you can see that it was submitted by the admin. And there's a shortcut to my profile page. And you can also see all the submissions that were made by this user. And in the bottom, we have some actions. We can reply via email. So if I click this one, it will open my default email client, which is none on this computer. But otherwise, it will open your like Outlook or, or whatever you use. We also have copy to another post type, and we'll come to that one later. If I go back to the all DVDB, we can see that this submission was read by admin at this date and this time. So if you are several admins, you can easily see who read this and when. Export form submissions. If you click the export link in the menu, this is a simple page. We can choose the form that we want to export submissions from. On this page, we have two forms, the freelancer contact and the multiple forms page. Let's choose the first one, freelancer contact, and I click export form. And now I can see a preview of the CSV content. It's, it's a pure text file uh, that you can open with the Excel or Google Sheets or the application of your choice. So I'll download this CSV file to my hard drive. And now if I click it, it will open my Mac application. And here I can see the, the submissions with date submit, submitted on which page, by who, name, email address, category field, and the message field. And I can run all the Excel commands and print it or import it to another application or whatever. So this is extremely useful. Settings. There is actually only one setting in DB form DB, and that is to disable the admin nag. And what is the admin nag? Well, it's this line in the top, and it's displayed on the entire website when you are in the um, dashboard, telling you that you have unread messages, and you can click to visit them or mark all as, as read. So if you think that's annoying, you can just go to DVDB settings and disable it and save the settings. And if I refresh, you can see that this line is gone, but you still have all the submissions in the database. Copy to another post type. The last feature I would like to show you is uh, the possibility to publish the content from a form submission into a post or a page. So if I open a specific submission, just clicking view submission, you can see in the bottom that we have a button saying copy to another post type. This is a bit cryptical, but if I click this, you can see that I can choose which post type I want to use. I can use the default posts or pages, media projects, or if I have custom post types or products that could be used too. The idea here is that you can use this for for example, testimonials. Let's say that you have a form where your clients can, can submit testimonials. Then maybe you want to publish them as posts or as a custom post type. This is an extremely fast and simple way to do that. So here I can assign different fields in the form to different parts of the post. So for example, the first name, I can say that I want a custom field. I've created a custom post type with a custom field called first name. I've done the same for the second one, last name, last name. The email address I leave unused. I don't want that public on my website. I don't think my client would appreciate that. Category, I will put that one in the uh, title field. And the message I will use as post content. And then I can choose if I want to keep the date of the original submission when it was sent or if I want to use the current date when I publish this post. I'll leave that as is and I click copy. And now we can have a look at this one by clicking view. And here we have the default DV post layout. 
So we can see that the category other is actually the title. And here we have the post content, which is the message field. I added the first name and last name as custom fields, and I haven't created those custom fields. So that's that was just to show you how it works. So for this to be meaningful, I would have to go to the DB theme builder and create a template for my testimonials where I would use dynamic content to, to display fields like first name, last name and, and style this in a nice way. But in a way, th this is just to show you this bonus feature. I guess maybe one, two percent use this one and the rest only use it for saving and exporting the form submissions. That's all for today. Let me know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials coming your way. Thanks for watching.